Hello, and welcome to another episode of QUTV. I'm Charity Boyd. And I'm Sarah Valkamp. Today on QUTV, we're talking how to stay calm while preparing for finals and which apps are best for handling your finances. But first, in just three short weeks, the spring semester will come to an end. Unfortunately, that means final exams are on their way. It is important to stay calm and prepare for the upcoming evaluations. Fortunately for you, we have some tips for staying mentally healthy and stress-free. Exam week can be a stressful time for many students. Not only is the week of the exam stressful, but the preparation before can also prove to be a difficult time if not planned properly. Sophomore Cameron Walker talks about how he prepares for finals week. I try and get enough sleep, plan things ahead of time, map out all the classes I need. I have to take finals for, um, and then I just try to not think about it as much, just so I don't stress about it because otherwise I'll just be doing poorly on the final. Along with Cameron's advice, we here at QUTV have come up with seven simple steps to stay stress-free. Step one, start early. Exams are still three weeks away, which give you the perfect opportunity to get a head start on studying for exams that you believe will be the most difficult for you. It's never too early to start studying. Step two, be organized. Write down when each exam is and what you need to study for. If the exam is a cumulative one, study a little bit each day and then review yourself on it later. Step 3. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Resources such as the LRC are available to help you better understand material. Studying with friends or attending study sessions can also be beneficial to helping you prepare. Step 4. Make sure you get enough sleep. Sleep is very important when it comes to keeping your body and mind refreshed, revitalized, and motivated. Step 5. Take breaks. Studying for hours at a time can cause you to lose focus. Taking little breaks to do things such as visit the HFC or listen to music can help you get back on track and stay healthy. Step six, don't rush. Plan enough time each day to get a successful study session in. Don't rush through a lot of material at one time and try to stay away from distractions. Finally, step seven, stay calm. Exams can be very stressful, but they don't have to consume your life. By starting early and pacing yourself, you'll be able to ace your exams with no problem. By following these seven simple steps, preparing for exams should turn out to be a breeze. If you are already feeling the pressure from exam time, Assistant Professor of Psychology, Dr. Brian Nolan, has advice for you. You should be doing, if once you say you find yourself experiencing some stress, give yourself, a, you, know, you know, it's okay to take a break sometimes. If you're getting really stressed out with something, give yourself, you know, tell yourself it's okay to take a break. And take a break, do something fun for a little while, but then refocus and, and get back to that. Exam time should be a time to relax, study, and have fun with learning. We here at QUTV wish you good luck and happy studying. Graduation is only a month away, and this year's service learning hours will do more than just stop students from walking. Students graduating next month will not receive their diplomas until they have completed 10 service learning hours. Seniors need to check their Moodle page or with their advisors to see how many hours they have left to complete. Service learning opportunities can be found on your QU email or on the Campus Ministry Board in the Student Center. Students graduating after this may will be required to complete the originally 30 hours. Students may complete hours over the summer, but they must get the projects approved with Campus Ministry before leaving for the summer. Uh, hopefully there will be some students that will be involved with some of the other summer activities that will uh, meet service requir requirements. Uh, but we will be tightening that up for next year so that everybody will know exactly what, what is expected and what can be. The Student Senate election is closed and the results are in. The winner of the 2014-2015 Student Senate are in the following order. Mitchell Vaughn is the new president and Scott Shoup has been elected vice president. Additional results, Kayla Power is the Vice President of Marketing, Mary Molnar is the Vice President of Finance, and Randy Swope is the Secretary. According to a recent study, 37% of students identified finances as a significant source of stress. Have no fear, there are many apps you can download for your smartphone to help manage finances and save a buck or two. The first app is Check. Check is an award-winning app that stays on top of your bills and money so you will never miss or get hit with overdraft fees again. Next is Yowza. Yowza Coupons instantly goes about finding great deals and coupons in your area. Choose the offer you like best and visit the store. 
Once you're ready to check out, show the cashier your phone and the coupon and instantly save money. The last is Mint. Mint Personal Finance pulls Mint in with your personal finance accounts into one place so you can manage your money from anywhere and track your spending. Create a budget and save money. My personal of the three is Mint. You can budget your finances according to categories such as gas, groceries, and you are also able to create and track each account you have, and the transaction keeps it helpful for you to save your money. To find out more, just type in the names of each app into your mobile app store. Once upon a time, the theater department of Clinton University performed a children's play called Sleeping Beauty. This past Monday, the cast and crew performed for St. Peter's School in the Pew Theater. The kids squealed at the evil fairy and even got a chance to help the prince save the day. The theater department will also perform for St. Francis School next week. It is a great opportunity for the college actors and elementary students to get exposed to the world of the theater. Upcoming performances are April 22nd at 7 p.m. for students, the 25th and 26th at 7 p.m., and also at 2 p.m. for the general public. All performances are in the Pew Theater in the basement of Francis Hall, and the shows are free. Come support your fellow actors for an hour of relaxation and enjoy a delightful show. Last Sunday, the Intramurals Club held their annual gauntlet event. Reporter Randy Swope has all the details. The gauntlet. It is an annual event that QU Intramurals puts on near the end of the year so that students can have some fun before they start preparing for finals. The event was held last Sunday in the Health and Fitness Center. There were multiple fun and competitive events that were set up for the students. These events include inflatable games, dodgeball, hockey, basketball, tennis ball throw, and golf. Teams competed against one another to see who can score the most points at the different stations. After all the events were completed, the team with the most wins would be declared the winner of the 2014 gauntlet. I asked a participant to see how he felt about his standings among his fellow competition. I'm thinking we're definitely going to win, without a doubt, hands down, um, but we'll see. There was also a raffle so that more students can win something. I asked the event organizer to see what kind of prizes the students could win in the raffle. TVs, iPads, um, bunches of gift cards, um, there's an iPod, uh, just a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. 82 prizes in all. I also asked Stuckman why he keeps this tradition alive. Uh, it's just kind of a fun, or a fun end of the year intramural event for everybody. Uh, they've participated in a lot of events this year, so it's uh, kind of uh, my way of giving back to them some way. Uh. If you missed this event and want to go to other events like this, then like the QU Intramural Facebook page. This way, you will never miss another event. For QU TV, I'm Randy Swope. Towards the end of every year, there is much cause for celebration, and students everywhere revel in sweet haze of summer holidays that began to approach. However, one off-campus event known as Keg Races may be taking things a step too far. The infamous event consists of a rather large gathering of QU students who set out to see who can drink an entire keg of beer the quickest. This unsanctioned event has begun to attract serious attention from both Quincy University as well as nearby Quincy residents. QUTV's Joshua Hale set up, went to talk to some of the QU students this week to find out how they feel about keg races. I think it's a good time. I think uh, it brings everybody together. You get a little loopy and uh it's pretty fun it's a good good time always been here for four years and done it four times so looking for a fifth um i think keg races is interesting in a way um a lot of kids like to go out there and just have a good time uh but in a way it's pretty dangerous uh keg drinking is actually really dangerous for people who don't know uh it's a good time to bond with your friends but it's also a bad time to bond in case you know, get alcohol poisoning. I mean, I've never actually participated in keg races. I don't like loud party scenes. I'm more of a smaller social occasion person, so I've always, I don't know, I just never went for them, so I'm not a big fan of keg races. I wasn't planning on going this year, probably won't stop by. I'll probably. Well, that's all for this week's episode of QUTV. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in two weeks with a special look at the school year that Quincy University has had. 
For QUTV, I'm Charity Boyd. And I'm Sarah Valkamp. Until next week, Hawks, keep soaring high.